Hi, Ed's Dwyer. It is Saturday, December 12th, 2020. Let's talk about Anthony Joshua's destruction of Kubrat Pulov. Now, over my shoulder here is uh, a picture of Sonny Liston. Right? I've included his mustache. It's distinctive. Now, Liston had a great jab. Had a spectacular jab. And Liston would walk down opponents and bludgeon them with the jab, right? Bludgeon them with the jab. When an opponent tried to jump inside, then that was Liston's real game. Then Liston was able to make them pay for jumping inside. Now, I fully expected to have Kubrat Pulev as the heavyweight champion of the world after his fight with Anthony Joshua. Don't get me wrong. The hedge held Joshua by stoppage. Let me concede that had the fight gone the distance, had it gone the distance, I would have lost the fight. I would have lost it all. Joshua was well on his way to a decision. But this fight surprised me. It was not at all what I expected. First, let me say, with full respect to Sonny Liston, Joshua, who is tentative, much more tentative than Sonny Liston, moved a lot better than I expected. Right? He moves a lot better than Sonny Liston moved. Right? Joshua's movement really surprised me. Let me say this. Uh, the first round went about as well as I thought it would. It was a feeling out round. Understand, one of my theses is that Joshua has stamina problems. You want to engage him. You want to force him to fight. You want to dictate the terms. You want him moving. He's big, right? Look to me to be out of gas in the middle of that Vladimir Klitschko fight, for example, right? A big muscular guy, you want to force him to use those muscles, but you don't want to get hit with his punches. So I thought the first round was excellent because not a lot happened in that first round. You want to take Joshua to the later rounds, but Kubrat Pulev is right in front of Joshua. They're actually on Joshua's side of the ring for a big stretch of the first round. Pulev makes you know, I'm not gonna run here. I'm gonna engage. I'm going to force Joshua to fight back, right? Joshua also is fighting to me a bit high. Understand, Pulev is 6'4". Now, there are going to be some opponents who Joshua is much taller than. Right here, he probably has maybe three inches on Kubrat Pulev. But Pulev is tall too, and Joshua doesn't really know how to use his height. Right? Joshua is not a Vitaly Klitschko, leaning back, having the punches end here. Well, in this fight, after the first round, it was interesting because I noticed Joshua wasn't busy bending at the waist. That wasn't his game, to avoid punches. What he was doing was staying outside himself, moving away. From Kubrat Pulev's jab, he wasn't afraid to be on his back foot, very different than Sonny Liston, right? Wasn't afraid to be on his back foot, wasn't afraid to be exceedingly patient, was throwing his own jab. Now understand, I believe that you, you have problems. If your jab is inferior to your opponent's jab, I thought Pulev had the better jab in this fight, and a jabbing contest breaks out. Right, had the fight stayed there, I would have been feeling good. I'd rather Joshua throwing jabs against the guy I've bet on than throwing overhand rights or hardcore hooks. Right, if it's a jabbing contest and this thing's going to go a few rounds, then great. That takes away Joshua's big puncher bigger man, bully type persona, right? But let me say this, Joshua's timing 
was a lot better than I expected. I was expecting Joshua to get hit with a bunch of Kubrat pull-up jabs. He didn't. Because of his timing. Because his pull-up came forward, Joshua moved backward just enough to avoid the shots. Right? Let me also say this too. During lulls in the action, and I thought that's what it took. During lulls in the action, Joshua was able to get deep in the pocket. Deep in the pocket. Where he was able to throw wicked hooks and uppercuts. I was surprised Pulev let that happen. Right? Let's just say that the punch of the fight was Joshua's uppercut, which he landed repeatedly. Folks, he was able to get low for that shot. He was able to tuck it into combinations. In other words, he comes in, he's throwing hooks. You notice when he collapses the pocket, he's a mid-range hooker who also throws an uppercut. I believe his trainer used to be the trainer of Carl Frotch. Now, Frotch's uppercut was a long-distance uppercut. Joshua has to be close to you to throw the uppercut. But just understand, if Joshua jumps inside and he sets his feet, you have to move away. You can't trade with him. The punches are too heavy. If you move in to clinch him, like Pulev did, and you grab his arms, right? Joshua might still be able to get off the uppercut. Again, it's a close uppercut. It's not a Carl Frotch uppercut, right? Joshua can be up on you like this and get off an uppercut that takes out your chin. So let me say this. Pulev makes some mistakes. Joshua was impressive. I was expecting Joshua to come in heavier. He was only five pounds more than he weighed for the Ruiz rematch. I was expecting Joshua to be a bit more reckless and a bit more impatient, a bit more frustrated by Pulev's jab. He's prepared for Pulev's jab and he's prepared to take his time. So the third round, the fight's almost over, folks. He drops Kubrat Pulev, right? You know how he does it. He's outside, then he jumps inside, and he's throwing power shots, right? He's not leading with power shots from outside like I thought he'd be forced to do. No, Pulev, who is making mistake after mistake, isn't using lateral movement enough. You have to pick a side. You can't come in square on Anthony Joshua. When Joshua jumps inside, he has a two-handed attack going. Pulev's not all the way over on Joshua's left shoulder, negating one of the hands. Then, of course, Pulev must not have watched the films of Joshua because rather than have a hand down here, you know Joshua's throwing a tight uppercut, right? It's a tight uppercut to your chin. Rather than have a hand here and a hand on one of, you know, Joshua's hands and then leaning into him to take the sting out of his other punch, Pulev grabs him this way and is getting hit with uppercuts from underneath. Then Joshua, as he hits Pulev, it's Joshua with the lateral movement, not Pulev, right? So Pulev doesn't even know where Joshua is. There's a moment in the fight where Pulev turns his back to Joshua. He's that confused. He doesn't know where Joshua is. He just knows he's getting hit with shots, right? He should have prepared himself for that kind of ambush. He should have prepared himself for Joshua's uppercuts, 
right? Don't get me wrong. Joshua's movement was much better than I thought it would be. Apparently that surprised Pulev. I think Pulev, like me, was expecting Joshua to be outside most of the fight. Was probably expecting Joshua to be like Joshua was against Joseph Parker, for example. Right? Outside most of the fight. Here, Joshua's outside. Right? You have a slow first round. Then Joshua slowly is picking his spots to jump inside. And Pulev was not ready. Let me say this, too. In addition to not being able to block Joshua's uppercut, Pulev made another mistake with the lack of lateral movement. Right? Joshua is bigger. He's not as coordinated as, let's say, a smaller fighter. You want to keep Joshua turning a little bit. You want him off his rhythm. Right? I thought Pulev was so convinced with the mastery of his own jab that Pulev is not up on his toes bouncing here a little bit, bouncing here a little bit, right? Forcing Joshua to make adjustments. No, Pulev is coming at Joshua straight, allowing Joshua to get comfortable with the angles. There isn't enough lateral movement here. Had there been lateral movement and had Joshua then jumped in, like he does during lulls in this fight, Pulev could have pivoted the other way, moved away, changed the pattern of his movement. So I was surprised by Joshua's movement. I was also surprised by Pulev's lack of lateral movement, right? That was a bit surprising to me. Now let's be critical here. Excellent performance by Joshua. Let's be critical here. Joshua is tentative. So he's blowing out. Kubrat Pulev in the third round, drops him twice. Pulev is able to make it back into the fight. Right? When Joshua comes out for the fourth and fifth rounds, he doesn't turn up the heat on Pulev. Now, it could be in part to preserve his stamina. But he doesn't turn up the heat on Kubrat Pulev. Right? There were rounds there on the table. I'm not saying Joshua didn't win the vast majority of the rounds. But let's just say if Pulev was a little bit more active, was a little bit more aware, he should have understood that Joshua is tentative. Right? Joshua is not going to go out there and just try to blow you away. I believe that's the opening for a Tyson Fury, and Alexander Usyk, right? I don't believe you could look at this fight and reach the conclusion that Joshua beats either of those two guys, right? Let me just say this. Fury can move laterally. Understand, as Fury is moving up on his toes, he's fainting. He's fainting like he's going to hit you. You have to be mindful of that because Fury has an excellent jab. Understand, too, that unlike this fight where the angles are set up, Kubrat Pulev is not varying his script that much. Even when he tries to get back into the fight, and he does, right? Kubrat Pulev is doing the same things he was doing in round one and round two. Right? Understand, Tyson Fury is ambidextrous. Right? With Joshua, you want to force him to engage in the pocket. You want to force him to have to think, to have to trade punches with you. Right? You want to make sure that there aren't the lulls in the fight that allow Joshua to then crash the pocket, be a mid-range hooker, and throw uppercuts as well. Right? You remember the Vladimir Klitschko fight? That fight hung in the balance. 
There's a little bit of a lull. Klitschko lets his guard down. Joshua gets off a big uppercut. That's who Anthony Joshua is. Let me say this too. Joshua's out of central casting, right? You see him, hardly any body fat. He looks like a heavyweight champ. Well, let me just say this. Joshua, though, isn't a lead puncher. He's more of a counter puncher. So you notice, Pulev throws a jab, right? Joshua dodges the jab. There's a little lull. Joshua jumps inside. Right? Joshua's waiting for you to be extended. He's waiting for you to have just missed the punch so he can get inside and not worry about your shots. He can get inside and he can just start throwing hardcore hooks. Well, against faster-handed guys like Andy Ruiz, Joshua wanted to avoid the pocket. Because Ruiz had faster hands than Joshua. And Ruiz has power. I know Bob Arum disagrees with me and used to promote Andy. I've seen many fights. The Demetrenko fight. The Joe Hanks fight. Andy's fight against Joshua. Where Andy has shown power up close. Right? Well, here, Kubrat Pulev, unfortunately... As they tell you on the telecast, on the zone, Brian Kenny and company, Sergio Mora, they tell you he has a good right hand, but the right hand requires distance for him to load up on it. So Joshua by design, Joshua's rehearsed, he's thought out, he's structured. Joshua by design waits for an opening where you know, Pulev throws a lazy left jab. Then he gets inside of Pulev's right hand, and it's time to feast. Right? So he counters the jab, gets inside, opens up. I believe against an Usyk or a Tyson Fury, and I know probably what? 50% of the boxing public is disagrees with me, probably a higher number than that after looking at Usyk's struggle with Derek Chisora, right? I know many of you believe that if Joshua gets inside on those guys, it's good night, Irene, right? I think when Joshua jumps in and is doing the mid-range hooker and uppercut thing, his defense disappears. You didn't see it in this fight because Pulev is long. I believe you would see it against a Fury or an Usyk. Fury can shorten his punches, so can Usyk, right? If they know that Joshua is going to be outside and is not going to want to stay in the pocket and is going to periodically, if he can't load up, set his feet, and throw an overhand right, or throw Joshua has you didn't see it in this fight he has an excellent lead left hook right it's excellent if you can note neutralize those two you know Joshua's next game is to get out of the pocket to jump in on you and to throw counter hooks and uppercuts right I believe a fury and Usyk would have that time where they'd be able to walk away. I also believe they'd have that time where if they wanted, they could have Joshua come in, then they could throw their own short counters. Well, anyway, I'll just say this. The hedge held. Um, I'm not saying I made any money on this fight, but let's just say the losses were cut. Uh, I will say Joshua at 31 did look a lot better in some areas than I've seen him look, right? Joshua has lifted his game with regard to his movement, his spacing, his willingness to be on his back foot, right? His willingness to bend. He gets low 
He's much more athletic than Pulev. He gets low and gets off uppercuts deep in the pocket. Right? Just like Vladimir Klitschko, who's kind of his big brother, in my opinion, style-wise, Joshua is learning the game as he goes forward. Right? Before this fight, I always used to call Joshua big and clunky. He's not as big and clunky as he used to be. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. I'll say this. It would have been excellent to see Joshua against this guy here, Sonny Liston. Just to see what would have happened if Liston was throwing a jab and crashing the pocket with it, and Joshua then tried to jab with him. Understand, Joshua is much bigger than Liston. Right, Liston's a bigger image than he was a fighter. Ali is much taller than Liston. It would have been interesting to see what would have happened if Joshua then jumps in the pocket like he does here against Pulev, who's taller than Liston. Right, if Joshua gets by Liston's jab and jumps inside, let's just say I believe there would have been more opposition more resistance to him than there was offered by Kubrat Pulev in this fight. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.